Hello, welcome back to Tutorial Made Simple channel. In this video we are going to learn Jetpack Compose Fundamentals, where we will learn everything we need to know in order to start. Using Jetpack on Pose in your Android projects, such as modifiers, layouts and view components, with Jetpack Compose. The newest way of creating user interfaces for Android applications. We don't need to use XML for creating layouts anymore. We can very easily create all the views only using Kotlin. Let's start by running Android Studio. Create a new project. On the phone and tablet select Empty Activity. Then give the project a name, pay attention to the minimum SDK. By default it is set at API 26, this is enough. You need to set minimum SDK level as 21 or higher. It is required to use Jetpack Compose. I am using the Hedgehog version of Android Studio. We recommend that you use the same or latest Android Studio. I will use this name and use all default parameters. Next. Click Finish. We have to wait until the loading completed. This is the contents of the main activity.kt file. The default code which, if we run, will display Hello Android. This Compose Fundamentals theme is the name of the theme class created for this project. If you name the project as My Project, then the name of the theme class will be My Project Theme. Press the keyboard control key and click on the Compose Fundamentals theme. Then, Android Studio will open the theme.kt file. We can change this file as we want. We will study more about theming in a later tutorial of this video tutorial series. Android Studio allows us to preview our UI without having to open an emulator or connect to a device. Click this split the windows and we will see the preview. We need to build it first, just click on this. You can also open the menu to build. This is the part of the code that allows us to see the preview. It is a composable function without parameters and annotating it with that preview. Then, we will invoke other composable functions from that to have a live preview. That preview annotation tells Android Studio that this composable should be shown in the design view of this file. You can see live updates to your composable preview as you make your edits. One of the primary benefits of using a preview composables is to avoid reliance on the emulator in Android Studio. You can save the memory heavy startup of the emulator for more final look and feel changes and at preview's ability to make and test small code changes with ease. Next, I will connect my Android phone using a USB cable because it is also faster than the emulator in Android Studio. Okay, now it's active, we can see it at the top. Or we can check it from the device manager. Let's hide the preview. And let's run this application to see what it looks like on an Android phone. Click this to run. We see the words Hello Android. In the upper left corner of the screen, this is from the grading function, where we fill an Android as input for the name, then the grading function adds the word Hello in front of it, and displays it on the screen. Of course, the default automatically generated code in activity main.kt follows best practices, which provides a good code structure, but we can get the same result display. With this part removed, just run the greeting function from onCreate like this. Let's run it, we should see the same result. It may not be the best coding practice, but it's great for simple code examples like this. Okay, we can see there's no change. Now let's try changing the writing. Okay, this is also true. Next we will study the function of the modifier.
In this section we will change the text font size, style and other decorations. I changed the greeting function a little. I removed the modifier from the parameters. We also need to delete this line. Next I will change the font, then make the letters bold. To see what parameters we can set in the text function, just hover the mouse over the function. And we can see what parameters are available in that function. Let's set the font size to 32.sp. We need to import sp. We can see this line just added in the import section. I will make the font bold by setting the text parameter font weight. We can see the preview change automatically. If not, you may need to refresh the preview. To change the text color, we just need to set color parameter. We can see in the preview, the text color is updated accordingly. Let's set text alignment to center. Parameters we used so far are defining what this text UI element is next. We are going to add one special parameter named modifier. Modifiers allow us to decorate or augment a composable. Modifiers allow us to change composable size, layout, behavior, and appearance. Also can use it to process user input. We can make UI elements interactive using modifiers. That means by using modifiers, we can make UI elements clickable, zoomable, draggable, or scrollable. So let's add some modifiers to our text composable. I'm going to add a background color. Modifier equals modifier.background. Then set the color to cyan. Now, let's add some more modifiers to our text composable. I will add the fill max height modifier, as we can see. Now this text view spans the height of the screen. Next I added fill max width. As you can imagine it will covers the entire screen. Also now we can see that the text is centered. Because of the text align parameter was set to center. Next I am adding border here. Set the border width to 3dp and the color to yellow. We can see a yellow border in the preview. Next, let's add padding. Let's set this to 10dp. We can see in the preview that the Android text. There is now a distance of 10 dp from the top border. If we move the padding modifier before border modifier, we can see the purview updated accordingly. The order of modifier functions is significant. Since each function makes changes to the modifier return by the previous function, the sequence affects the final result. You can see the difference in the preview. When we add modifiers to the Jetpack Compose UI elements, the order in which they are added is very important. Let's see how it looks on a real Android phone. There are so many parameters and modifiers available in Compose. We can see explanations and examples in the documentation. The link is in the description of this video. You can try it to become more familiar with the function and use of each modifier. One more thing I want to show you is that for these height and width modifiers we can add fractional values as parameters. We can see ID is very helpful for us, allowing us to see the available parameters and link to examples. 
Let's say we want our text view to have half of the height. So we can set this as 0.5f and the width set to 0.3f. We may not see these changes properly in the preview. Let's see it on mobile or it can also be in the emulator. Okay, now we can see the changes. The text view height becomes 50% and the width becomes 30%. At this point I hope you get an idea of how we can use modifiers and other parameters to write jetpack elements. There are so many parameters and modifiers that we haven't covered. However, we will see most of it the more we practice it. Next, we will both learn to handle columns and raw layout. So keep up the enthusiasm until it's finished. Let's move on. As we use composable functions to display more than one UI element, we must provide guidance on how they should be regulated, otherwise, they will stack on top of each other. Let me show you with an example. Here I am going to use the same project we created during the previous lesson. To provide a better view, let's delete this. Let's make two copies of this greeing function like this. We don't see the preview updated accordingly. That because we did not change the preview composable function. Let's copy these three lines and paste them into the preview function. We can see now the updated preview, but the writing is overlapping. Now we add a column function, then copy and paste the greeting function into the column like this. As expected, the column layout composition has its child items placed in vertical order. Before we add some modifiers to our columns, let's look at the documentation about layout basics. We see here that there are three ways to range user interface elements, namely columns, rows and boxes. We use column to place items vertically on the screen. Similarly, we use row to place items horizontally on the screen. Both column and row support configuring the alignment of the elements they contain. We can use boxes to lay elements on top of each other meaningfully with little control. We can also add modifiers to decorate their appearance as we did in the previous lesson. Now let's add a modifier to that column. I am invoking fill max size function, so the column will take the size of the entire screen. We can see in the preview, the column takes the entire screen's height. Next I am going to modify column background color by adding background modifier and set its color parameter. Modify the background color to light gray. While finished for column modifier, next we will see how to range items in columns. We can see here for column there are vertical arrangement and horizontal alignment parameter. We will use it to arrange and align these items within the column. We can choose arrangement center, bottom, top, space around, space between, space evently. You may try one by one how the results looks. I will select space evently this time.
Click on this to see more info about alignment horizontal. Alignment horizontal is often used to define the horizontal alignment of a layout in parent layout. Okay, let's try by adding this horizontal alignment in our column. We need to add this class. Just click this import class. We should select this one. There is still an error. Indeed, there is no horizontal. The options are center horizontally and and start. Let's select center horizontally. We can see that the text is now centered in the column. We can try to set it to start or end and see the result. If we set it to end, the text will be aligned to the end or to the right, and vice versa if we set it to start. The text will be aligned to the start of the column or to the left. Okay, let's run it on the phone. We have not updated the onCreate function in main activity. We have to copy and update the onCreate function code. Because we didn't modify it in the greeting function. But we made changes in the preview function. So let's copy this from the preview function. OK, it is updated. Let's try changing the column width by setting fill max width. The result is now the column fills the screen. Something similar can be achieved using fill max size, but first, let's make the text in the middle of the screen first. Now we delete the fill max height and fill max width, then add the fill max size modifier. OK, we've seen the results on the phone screen or in the emulator. For column layout, I think that's enough. You can deepen it further as you go. In the next part, we will learn raw layout. We've learned to use columns to place items vertically on the screen. Now we will use row to place items horizontally on the screen. Let's replace this column function with row function and see the difference. Of course, the vertical arrangement and horizontal alignment modifiers are not valid for rows. We have to replace it with horizontal arrangement and vertical alignment. I think it's pretty clear why. Now we try to run this application. We see now the writing is sideways in one line. But the last greeting is overwritten. I tried changing the words so they would fit on the screen. Now it looks better. Next I will create a new composable function, which contains image and text in a row. Don't forget to write at, and then compose before the function we are going to create, and then give the function a name, for example image demo. Let's add row then image as a child or item of row, like this. We have to import image class. But let's add, add an image file first. I took it from the internet which I downloaded to the local hard disk. Then I copied it to the drawable folder. Then let's copy it to the drawable folder. You need to be on Android and click on the raise folder. You will see drawable folder. Right click and then paste the image. Rename it to my cat. Then click OK. If successful. Then we see the mycat.jpg file is there. 
Now let's import the image class, it makes no difference. We can also do this earlier before we copy the image. You have to be careful here, what we need is a composable image. To load images like PNG, JPG, WVP or vector resources from disk, we use the painter source API with the image reference. Here we need to set the painter equal to the painter resource API, with reference to the drawable image we just copied. We also need to set content description. We can put a description to help people with accessibility needs use your app successfully. Content description parameter is used to describe a visual element, especially related with accessibility services. For this case, I set it to null. Paste the image demo function here. I need to refresh the preview. OK, the image is displayed in the preview. Next, I will add text next to the image. Because we will create two separate texts next to the image. In this row, I will add a column first and then add the text. In the preview, we don't see any text next to the image. We need to set several parameters and image modifiers so that the image is not too big and fits in the position it should be. Let's refer to the documentation. We can take an example from this document. I just copy this modifier. This should modify the size, border and background of the image. Let's set some image properties to customized. We can see here some properties can be applied to the image. We can specify a content scale option to crop or change how an image is scaled inside its bounds by default. If we don't specify a content scale option, content scale fit will be used. Let's see how it looks in the preview. I use content scale fit, actually this is the default value. If I delete it of course the appearance doesn't change. I just comment this line. Yes, the preview is still the same. I modify this to crop. It looks better now. We can try several content scale options and see the results in the preview. Next, I will add padding to this row so that there is space, so I need modifier here. Modifier equal to modifier.padding. Let's set it to 18 dp. I will modify this text color to blue and font weight to bold. Let's see how it looks on Android phone. We can also create images in various shapes using the built-in clip modifier. 
As a simple example, I will change this image to a circle. We need to import this class. Just delete this background color for this time, it's not needed. Now let's see what it looks like on an Android phone. Now it looks better. I think that's enough for now. Hopefully this video can at least give an idea of the use of column and row layouts as well as images. For more details, we can see the documents here to learn more. In this basic Jetpack Compose video, of course there is still a lot that hasn't been covered. In the second part, I will try to cover boxes, also text input, lazy columns and others, so stay tuned and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. The source code can be downloaded on GitHub.